seeing is is a, a bar napkin all the way to this point. This is like upgrades on steroids. Uh, it is. You know, times 100. Uh, call up Grand Design and say, hey, I have a design I want to sell you. 200 hours of welding all the way back. So we wanted the storage of a Class A. We wanted the haulability of a toy hauler. Roof line of a fifth wheel. Um, and it didn't exist, so you had to exist. build it. Don't tell anybody, but we actually have extra storage we don't need. And school on the road, huh? Yay. That's your favorite part, huh? Uh-uh. <laughs> it's funner not to go to school. To subscribe, which is the red button. Like, what's that? So they have an extra toe. And what are those for? <laughs> Intimidation. Would you put a price tag on it? We can talk about that later tonight after I get two or three beers in you. <laughs> okay. Sure. 75 feet of fun. <laughs> yeah. This is the first time I've flown in over two years. Kind of on a secret mission here, flying all the way from Florida to Arizona for some awesome RV tours. These are gonna blow your mind. Stay tuned. I requested a mid-size car, and this is a mid-size car. Here we go. So from Phoenix, I'm heading straight north of I-17, about a four-hour drive to a place we were just at last year, Lee's Ferry near Page and uh, right here in Arizona. That's right, I'm going back to Lee's Ferry in Northern Arizona, one of my favorite camp spots uh, that we've ever had. To meet a really cool couple with a really upgraded RV. Can't wait. on the journey, stepping into the unknown, waving goodbye to our worry. So we run wild and And they even got the same camp spot that Shree and I had. How did you guys find this spot? <laughs> of course. There's a really great channel we watch on YouTube. Oh man. <laughs> you guys are like all alone up here. It's so nice. <laughs> man. So is it getting pretty cold at night or? It's 27, it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. 
That's right, I drove all the way up here to one of our favorite camp spots to interview Josh and Megan, full timers, or is it full timers? Yeah, uh, like we're fools to be full timing. Okay, and, and just an ordinary RV right here, just your basic setup. <laughs> Only the necessities. <laughs> hey, nice to meet you. Hey, Tom. Nice to meet you, too. Yeah. Hi. Right there. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Yeah. yeah. You probably were thinking, is he really going to drive up here? <laughs> you know, you'd have, to be, uh, you'd have to be crazy to drive this far, but look at it. I mean, it's out there, but it's, it's killer. And, and you did all of this yourself then or yeah our oldest son is 20 and he's a he's a hell of a fabricator and and does a lot of welding so he helped me with a lot of the upside down welding wow but yes no that what you're seeing is is a, a bar napkin all the way to this point <laughs> and it was a <laughs> it was a sketch after a sketch and this is what you get did you bring a sweater? Uh, oh, yeah. I brought my big winter coat from Minnesota. Maybe that's <laughs> nice. going to be overkill. <laughs> so what model of Grand Design do you have? So this is a 310 GKR. R okay. being obviously the residential package. All right. And I just learned the other day, I don't know if this is true, but 310 is, stands for the square footage. I it's, think it's, it's supposed to. Grand does that. But, and all RV manufacturers are supposedly doing that, but... I, I've also heard that it doesn't always match. Okay. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, this is a 310 GKR, uh, 35 foot. We knew that we wanted a toy hauler. That was, that's what we wanted. We couldn't fit the toys we have. We have a, a <laughs> Land Cruiser rock crawler on 49 inch IROX. And I can, uh, I can give you a picture of that so you can kind of show why we built this. We built this with the concept of being a crawler hauler. <laughs> not a toy hauler, not a any. It's a crawler hauler. You want your rock crawler on the back, uh, but we've now since learned that the Raptor's a lot more comfortable <laughs> than hauling a rock crawler around for getting groceries and things. No kidding. So the Ford Raptor goes on the back, and we put the Solitude on a 53 foot low boy. So that's what we are. Pin to tail is 53 feet. Well, this is such a cool area. It really, I mean, is. Uh, it really is. This campsite, how does this rank with all the campsites you've been in? Well, it's smaller than we would normally uh, go for. <laughs> <laughs> it looked a lot bigger well, on video. But well, we're, yeah, you, know, you guys can't exactly get into just any old site. No, Google Satellite, Google Earth is our friend. We okay. measure, you can measure things right there from your iPad. Right. Measure these sites out lengthwise. Um, we like to stay out of the crowds, so we're off-season type uh, dry slash boondock campers. Great idea. So, um, yeah, it might be a little colder than most people would like, but there's nobody here. It's right. Quiet. I mean, it's it's basically empty, and this, yeah. again, it, uh, Lee's Ferry's first come, first served. Yeah. $20 a night, uh, unless you have the, uh, I think, the senior, senior. pass. Yeah. Correct. And it's no hookups whatsoever. Nope. There and this a... time of year, no water. Oh, so there's no water over there. During the cold uh, months, okay. there's no, no water even. <laughs> so you're really brave in it. So, and you got Site 45. Hey. Yeah, one of the best <laughs> sites right here. That's awesome. Let's take a look at the other side. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. <laughs> and now you see why this site is so desirable. We got the Colorado River right here and almost nothing impeding the view at all. Beautiful. It's, it's really amazing. The Lee's Ferry area here has got a lot of history. And if you visit here, there's so much to do around here. Gosh, I did this awesome hike when I was here and it was really challenging. I mean, I never even finished it because it's like, like crawl up this wall or go down or something really like, I'm not doing that by myself. That's where I gotta go along there carefully. <laughs> Tom, what have you gotten yourself into? Yeah, yeah we I'm saw a, some I'm stuff fine. where we're like, that's not kid friendly. <laughs> that yeah. looks like the extremist. That's awesome. <laughs> but gosh, uh, you can take tours on the river here and go up uh, to Horseshoe Bend, yep. which is super Amazing. cool. Very close to here. Yep. 
and easy access in and out yeah yep yeah that that's a uh, gosh and of course we're close to page and there's a lot to do around page but gosh or white water rafting right yeah, we see them going see. down daily yeah. there was yeah. a group this morning it's <laughs> unbelievable yeah they will put in right up here to head down to the grand canyon from amazing. here amazing yeah mul those multi-day trips which is something we'll have to try at some point. Like, that's for the risk takers, I yeah. guess. <laughs> yes, yes. Cat and 51% Savannah, so they are called bobolinks. Wow. Let's go say hi to them. <laughs> Whoop. Scaring them, I guess. Yeah, wow. Pretty cats. They are one year? Yeah, February. February. Those eyes. She's cross eyed. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Yo, you can see the bobcat yes. in the ears. If you see our other one, she is a spinning image of one. Oh, there she is. Oh, yeah. Wow. They got polydactyl toes. Yeah, big feet. You guys are quite the pair. Oh, I see you're nodding in agreement. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. They don't know any better. They've been traveling with us since day one. So what was the inspiration for this RV this way? The inspiration was um, to be able to raise a family uh, full time. So we wanted the storage of a Class A. We wanted the haulability of a toy hauler. And, um, you know, the, the roof line of a fifth wheel, the high line roof. So those were the things that we started with. Um, and it didn't exist. So you had to exist. build it. It did not exist. <laughs> they, it, we had to build it. And, and you know, it, it snowballed into this monster that you see now. Um, it didn't start out that way. So did you uh, call up Grand Design and say, hey, I have a design I want to sell you? Uh, no, no. It didn't quite work like that. I wish. <laughs> no. But, you know, Grand Design, we did. I was in contact with the rep, and he said, you know, we'll stand behind warranty items and things, um, despite the fact that you are doing what you're doing today. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to blame you for the shower pump not working. So um, we were happy to hear that because you're going to take a brand new trailer. You don't exactly want to kill the warranty. <laughs> right. So well, I, I, that's actually really uh, great news. I've heard Grand Design is really cool about yeah. people doing upgrades. This is like upgrades on steroids uh, it is you know times a hundred it is <laughs> not too many people want to take the fifth wheel and weld it to another trailer completely um, but it's welded solid and it's not going anywhere yeah well let's maybe go like back to front sure. uh, on this because sure. this is yeah this is your deck this is 18 17 and a half feet of deck uh, that Pretty much, you name it, you can haul it. I mean, we've had sand cars on here, we've had rock crawlers on here, and we haul our full-size pickup on here. Right, wow. That is something, I, looking at the pictures that you sent when you were first, you know, talking to me about this tour, it was like, oh my gosh, that, that pickup's on the back. It is. <laughs> a lot of people don't realize it even when they see it. They, they It just is too much. Right. And I'm assuming these are the ramps right here? That's correct. Yep. Ram ramps come out and hook right in. Um, fairly straightforward. <laughs> Away you go. Obviously, we're off level, and you know how this spot is for that. So, oh yeah. But the the pickup truck's got enough clearance. You just pull right on and off. Um, prior to this, we would boondock out at the dunes, and the sand car would go on and off. It doesn't matter if you decide to switch vehicles. I mean, you can pretty much. You're, you're only limited by your own imagination. I. I've toyed, <laughs> kind of messed with Megan quite a bit about it, putting a Coleman inflatable hot tub on the back. 
<laughs> we, we have another water reservoir. We could fill with even more water if we wanted for the hot tub. I, I mean, yeah. It, now that would be cool, the hot tub. Right? Definitely on these cold nights, I mean. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the hot tub on the back would be, uh, you'd get some looks there. Uh, for sure. But yeah, I mean, starting front to back, um, I can walk you through the things we've done to to make it our home. Yeah, let's let's do it. Uh, Starlink right there. And do you take it down do when you're traveling? Down. Yes. We okay. Pull it, we pull it down. We went with I believe it's the volcano mount. Um, two two clicks, easy on and off. It's it's easy setup. I say easy because I'm not a tech guy and I figured it out. So. Uh, it's pretty straightforward and you know super fast internet in areas you can barely get one bar of cell service right and this would be one of them this is yes. absolutely one of them there is very limited cell service here um when i started up the starlink we were at about 290 megabytes per second uh, the, plenty for the kids to do their abc mouse and their um good and the beautiful school stuff so yeah. No kidding, when we were here, we literally, to upload videos, we had to drive all the way into Page at the Walmart yeah. to, wow. to upload videos because, right, there's just nothing. It's bad here. when you have to go an hour to get uh, any internet. Right. Yeah. Uh, so you literally, I don't know between the different cell carriers, uh, I mean, I have signal in town but I, I don't think there's much bandwidth on that so. we will keep looking at starlink and maybe this year will be the year that we jump on board that <laughs> Definitely worth so it. <laughs> it's pretty plug and play and pretty pretty uh you know one complaint i had and and josh had mentioned it in, in the video you did with him the hundred foot non disconnectable if that's a word from the actual dish is a bummer. They should make it to where it's plug in at each end. I took the Cat 6 plug, cut it to length that we needed, made it work for our rig, and then went ahead and did a disconnect, waterproof disconnect into the coach. Okay. Because the 100 foot is just absurd. <laughs> just, let's just say it's a good conversation starter. <laughs> so people don't just walk right by and don't take a second look, right? One out of ten. One out of ten do. They're just oblivious. The other nine out of ten, they want to know. Uh, they want to know exactly what's going on. Uh, no kidding. I, I mean, I have never seen a setup like this. I think Grand Design, if I remember at the Tampa RV show a couple of years ago, they had uh, an RV with a back deck, and but it wasn't. It wasn't this big. I'll have to know. have a long conversation with Grand Design about said deck RV. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I don't have any idea what the model number was or if they're still selling it. Right. But I, I do believe there are a few of them out there. Yeah. And it wasn't a solitude, though. Right. So. Well, I mean, it's, it, it's something that we, we looked at a lot of RVs. And we didn't really necessarily want to go solitude nor reflection or or any of the other drvs and things but what it came down to is what fits the deck we had 44 feet of blank slate to work with here 35 feet of it became living space um, the the rest is the back deck i didn't want to compromise any less than about 18 feet of deck so i could keep my options wide open for what we haul so is that why you chose like this particular model at, at 35 feet it is okay it's exactly why we that chose makes it. sense yeah um we chose this layout for the footage and because we felt like it was very luxurious um we really enjoyed walking through it going this is how we would probably do it the opposing slides inside are really really nice to have and one major thing that really appealed to us that we didn't even really get until we started RVing was that we can get to everything with the slides in. We can get yeah. to our bedroom, we can get to our bathroom, we can get to our refrigerator, 
Our oh, pants. you guys are lucky. So yeah, that, that's something we were like, well, look at this. Yeah, we made that mistake when we bought our momentum. That uh, I wouldn't say it's a mistake, but we knew that that was a trade-off that we were not going to be able to get to the refrigerator, get to any of the living area with the slides in. Okay. So, but but that's great because that is one of the things when you're picking out an RV, you want to make that decision and and realize that what you're doing like if you're somewhere where you can't take your slides out but you still want to use it yes yeah yes well and people come up and, and talk to us and say wow you've got it all and i say no i've got everything we want the next guy over here with his class a tag axle he has everything he wants there, there's a million ways to rv no there's no right one right way to do it um you know everybody has their own needs that they meet with what they purchase or build <laughs> exactly and this is uh idea number one million and one <laughs> right here on yeah. how to rv yeah. <laughs> yeah some people look at this and go i couldn't get into any state parks with that setup and i say no you sure aren't gonna get into any state parks with that setup. <laughs> you better be ready to boondock which is why we we hold a lot more water than most um we need we need that so how many gallons of fresh water can you hold? So the solitude itself holds 93, plus we have a pressure tank and then the water heater. So that works out to be a little over 100 there. And then I have an auxiliary tank in the back that is 150 gallons extra. Oh, that's awesome. It, it, it helps with, uh, with having children. Uh, no kidding. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's like... For those of us that boondock or dry camp, that's like music to your ears. It is. I mean, it is. Uh, that's one big plus on our momentum. We have a lot more fresh water than a lot of them. Even the bigger momentums have less for some reason. We have over 150 gallons. That's, am that's amazing. Yeah, which is, you know, that's awesome. We've, we've gone out for 14 days. Yeah and not had to refill water. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, uh, but yeah, you guys, so you're at 200. And 50. 250 mm -hmm. for Two, fresh water. 250 on the fresh, and then um, thanks to you, we, we bought on Amazon through your link, the uh, 150 extra, <laughs> just in case we really, really need water. Yeah, and you know what, I filmed that video here. Ironically, you sure did. <laughs> it was this site, yep. the big giant water bladder. That's right. And uh, we'll put a link down for our Lee's Ferry video uh, uh, when we were at this site, but also that water bladder video as well, because that is like, oh man. That... It makes it so nice to take the pickup, go grab some water like you did, come back, fill it up, you know, and you're and you're good for another week or two right you have that and the blue tote and you could yes. dry camp perpetually yes in theory yes <laughs> in theory i just made the long trip <laughs> yeah. with our blue tote over to dump uh two days ago okay uh, it's a nice slow seven mile an hour drive just like you did <laughs> right away you go <laughs> so. yeah for sure here's 150 on the water and then I built a 200 gallon reservoir that we haven't used yet. Um, we were gonna originally use it for fuel, for toys, but now we're thinking we're gonna use it for gray water. Oh, okay. We might use it for extra gray water storage. Okay. We haven't decided yet. But we have it, it's built in and it's ready to go when we need it. So you're saying right now you don't have any extra holding capacity we, for gray or black? Gray, no, what the solitude came with. We okay. have 100 gray and 50 black. Okay. Um, and that's that's actually worked pretty well for us um, using the blue tote every now and again. We've never had to use it for black, only gray. Okay. Yeah. So as far as the water system goes, um, all our storage compartments here are full of something, but we bring water in um, into the, this is system in through uh, the clear source filters, three stage, then through a UV filter and up and into the coach. Okay. And we do actually use the solitude filter at the very end. A three stage filter is on our list this year. We need to do that. 
So three stage is nice. Um, we got tired of hauling water bottles around. So we like the UV knowing that we can drink anything for the most part <laughs> and, and not get sick. This pump here is the transfer pump that goes back to the back of the coach for the other 150 gallons. Um, so I use that to transfer. And you've got a spare right there just waiting. I have a spare pump because I'm that guy. If I don't carry a spare, it will <laughs> fail. Um, yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, it got our first trip out, in fact, uh, mid-shower, ran out of, uh, lost a pump. So that was a fun first adventure. Storage bays are all pretty full of stuff. You know, we keep extra hose and, uh, uh, you know, everybody has their fitting bags to, to get all their... Who knows what you'll need. In here somewhere is that sweet little blue fitting that you recommend. Oh yeah, and it was here as well that I had to use it. <laughs> I haven't used it yet, but thanks to you, we have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. More stuff. Exactly, and I had to uh, use a little uh, clamp on the end of it to keep it on there. We lucked out because we got here and the host said, oh, by the way, in the winter, we don't have water here. <laughs> so we were pretty fortunate to you came be carrying as much as, as, as much as we had, yes. Mm -hmm. And you probably aren't concerned about water weight like the rest of us are, huh? We, we are not concerned about water weight. This, this setup here is triple Dexter 9Ks. Um, we have about 9,000 pounds on the pin of the semi. Uh, total going down the road, we are 48,000 pounds loaded. That's, wow. That's all the water, all the truck, everything. So instead of wondering if you can, about bridges for height, you're thinking about bridges and weight. Like, I, I have to admit, there's you. been a few bridges. <laughs> we went across the London Bridge in Lake Havasu City, and I went, I hope they put together that granite right. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, we are a little heavy, um, and that's why we ended up with the uh, Volvo. Uh, this is, this truck doesn't even really know what's behind it. Oh, I imagine. It's it, still nothing like a loaded, uh, you know, semi. People ask, <laughs> I say this thing was built for 80,000 pounds. We're hauling 48,000. It's a happy truck. <laughs> no um, kidding. It motors right along, no problem. Uh, we, we like the, uh, extra braking and a lot of the safety things that come with uh, using a heavy duty truck. And I imagine you had to get the special license for that. <laughs> um, so you do not need any special licensing as long as you go through the hoops in your local state to register it as an RV. Okay, gotcha. So, so no, no CDL then? No. You, okay. But that really wildly depends on the state. Some states are very strict. Montana is not. Right, and I, I get that a lot too, just for our length with the Ford F450 and our 43 foot momentum. Okay. Saying like, well, you you need a CDL for that, so not in Minnesota. Okay. So, <laughs> right, people yeah. are always quoting the rules for their state. For their state, yeah. And each state's different, and, it, and, if, and they thought, well, then if you're going through another state, you have to adhere to their rules. It's, no, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah, I think the so. RV world is a lot of gray area, which is nice. But yeah. you know, at the end of the day, there's guys that hop in their Class A tag axle weighing 50, 60,000 pounds, and they have no special license either. Right. Um, I feel like, I honestly feel like we are safer going down the road than that guy with a uh, you know a half ton and a fifth wheel down uh, on the back of him. yes you know we've all seen those people out there that yes have, are way overweight um we are not and uh you're not talking about us before we knew that are you <laughs> <laughs> no no i'm not putting anybody on the chopping block <laughs> no yeah we uh we are always sharing that information about don't buy too small of a truck yes <laughs> so. well if you if you buy a big truck and grow into it this is what you get in the end so, <laughs> if you <laughs> we, just keep growing we can all think that theory yes. <laughs> right <laughs> yeah um so the volvo if you want to skip over and talk about the truck sure we can. the volvo is a 15 liter cummins isx it is 600 horse and 2,250 foot-pounds of torque. It is an automated shift manual, so it's no, no clutch, no shift pedals, 
you push the gas and it goes 12 speed um it's a 2004 pre-smog which uh we love no the only smog on it was an egr and we deleted that um, okay it is air ride suspension air ride cab and air ride seats there's enough room in the back for a bed for the kids there's 32 inch flat screen of refrigerator um things like that to get down the road with wow that's awesome stuff to keep the kids happy while we're driving <laughs> that, that is uh that is going to make a lot of uh the full-time families think like oh man maybe we should do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah if if you can i would i would recommend it just for the simple fact that you know if you look out there in the heavy duty truck world hdt's is what they call them if you look around you can find deals this truck this the way you see it for the most part was a twenty thousand dollar truck okay it, it's seven hundred thousand miles on it they're good for about a million million two we will never get to that mileage um traveling the way we travel and uh it they're a good bargain for what you get um i think they're intimidating by their size but you gain that back with visibility out of the windshield visibility over all the cars on the road you can see miles down the road um the big mirrors and there's just a lot of pluses to the heavy duty truck. No kidding. And twenty thousand dollars? <laughs> right. I wow. mean that's that's a third of the cost of the pickup we haul yeah. on the back. <laughs> it, it's crazy that they're affordable. Um Maybe they'll go up in value as the secret gets out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have hundreds of RVers all looking for uh, used trucks yeah, yeah. <laughs> to upgrade to. Yeah, I mean, safety is the name of the game for most RVers, right? Yeah. This, this, this truck here doesn't really even know that there's 28,000 pounds behind it, which is amazing. <laughs> and what are those for? <laughs> Intimidation. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It seems like I remember a, a movie or something with a big truck. Mad Max. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And of course they were using them for other things. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. <laughs> good, good for killing zombies or something. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Look at that. So the exhaust is side dump on the other side, eight inch side dump. Oh, okay. So you guys don't just sneak in uh, anywhere, do you? No, we don't sneak into camp. Uh, <laughs> pe people hear us coming, but the nice thing is, is so do the deer. <laughs> if they don't hear you, it's not like it's going to do any damage, right? <laughs> no, if, I, if God forbid that day comes, we right. are safe. Um, yeah. That, that was a huge selling point for us on the heavy duty truck, was safety. The brakes, the, uh, you know, your stopping power. We've had trailer brake malfunctions and the semi has no issues bringing all of this to a halt in a safe fashion we like the jake brake i love the fact that we have 300 gallons of diesel we can go coast to coast we don't need to stop oh man and believe it or not we log our mileage and we're right at a like 11 11 and a half miles a gallon I was so going to ask you that. It's not terrible. No, that isn't. When you're Seriously. up in the Northern California, yeah, it drops down for sure. But at, around here, it's it's very respectable mileage. Went ahead and did the TSLB, the trailer saver, triple bag. This hitch setup is rated at 32,000 pounds. Really? Mm -hmm. So this, is, this here is a plug that feeds straight from the alternator, 40 amps to a Victron DC to DC converter in the coach. So we are charging between 30 and 40 amps as we go down the road, um, which is important for us because we don't have solar yet. No kidding. And I'll have to find out about what kind of a battery setup you've got. We're leaving here and Battleborn Batteries is in Sparks. We've already put together an order with the guys at Battleborn 
we'll be able to double the 40 amp we have now. We'll be able to go to 80 amp charge down the road. So while we're in travel, we're charging 80 amps because lithium batteries can take whatever you're willing to throw at them. Right now for us, we run the Trojan six volts. Uh, okay. And the L, L16 HEMs. Um, they are 390 amp hour a piece. Right. I've heard of a lot of people that, that do go with a six volt route and there's some advantages to that, right? You know, I think in the old school scheme of things, it, it was a huge advantage to that setup. But for me, all the research I've done on lithium, there's no replacement for the lithium. They, they can be drained twice as deep. Uh, we're limited to 50% discharge. Right. Lithium, they're controlled within the battery, at least Battleborns are. You can discharge it all the way down. A, a huge plus for us isn't weight. <laughs> we're not worried about weight. For us, it's all about how fast can we jam juice back into the battery to charge up so we can go again. And the rate we charge these batteries is excruciatingly slow in comparison to a lithium setup. Painfully slow. You know, painfully. <laughs> <laughs> the smoker sits there, I bring it up. Um, it's a 12 volt setup, so it runs off the semi batteries. Okay. It's uh, easy in and out. I can run it off the semi or I can run it off the, the coach. Um, great little grills, GMGs, nice little smoker. Okay. Uh, the Yeti cooler is our overflow for drinks. Uh, we haul kids drinks primarily in the in the Yeti cooler there. Um, you mean you're not saying, hey, everybody come on down to Lee's Ferry. Josh and Megan are having a big party. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, we can, we can do it, I guess. We've got beer for everyone. <laughs> they might throw us out, but hey. Not really. <laughs> right? Right. I can't remember the alcohol rules here. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know either. <laughs> I just don't ask, don't tell. That's huh? right. It's, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, that is a Yeti 210. Um, okay. Really good size, good size cooler. And that does ride there, right? That rides there. Uh, beside it usually are, are two propane tanks for our um, campfire pit um, and then right on either side of that are 150 gallon fuel tanks for the semi. It rides on 300 gallons of diesel. You're fully doomsday prepped here as well. Yes. yes. <laughs> Basically, if the world goes to funny. crap. You know, it, it's so funny because you guys I would, are okay. <laughs> I would joke with, with Megan about it. I would say, you know, if, if 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 all hell breaks loose, we can throw a pump in the water and pump it through our water system. We literally can take water right out of you know wherever we need to through the UV, and it's drinkable. You know, I mean, it might not taste the best. Who knows? But it's you know, for doomsday stuff, yeah, we could get by for a while. We we bought this thing sight unseen. We flew into Phoenix, Arizona looked at it it was set up prior to us buying it for an rv it was already registered as an rv and we got in it no experience at all and uh, drove all the way back home so you had no experience driving a big rig like this no biggest truck i ever drove was our f350 oh wow well a, a lot of you are gonna want to hear that because of the intimidation level of of a truck this massive I would urge anybody that's intimidated by a semi, stop looking at it for face value. Get in it, sit in it, and drive it. The visibility is amazing. The brakes are amazing. The steering is so much sharper than anything I've ever driven. This thing will turn a U-turn tighter than a 2020 Ford Raptor. And I'm not making that up. Wow. Um, it, it's all intimidation from the outside. You need to get in it and that'll go away rather quickly for us. It did very quickly. The way this worked out was the actual low boy we ordered straight from PJ trailers. And we made a few modifications with PJ. They worked with us on a few things where we wanted the axles and whatnot. When the low boy arrived, I had it for about a month prior to the grand design showing up. We ordered the grand design as well. We wanted whole body paint, etc. So what I did was I measured <laughs> a couple times off ones that were on the dealer lot. 
I knew that I needed to cut this gooseneck off and remove it and re-weld it in place where I wanted it to fit tight to the fifth wheel. Also right here, you see this is the heat burnt through from where I welded the fifth wheel hitch into the goose, the, the neck of the low boy. So these two trailers are one right here, as well as 200 hours of welding all the way back with extensive cross members and two months of solid work wow. to make it all happen. Wow, that's crazy. What we got was, is we got a super rigid frame, obviously, right? We have frames on frames on frames. We ended up with about two feet of frame. So we added the storage boxes. Perfect for uh, your kids' toys, as I you, see. As you can see, the, the storage boxes are used appropriately. It's just um, handy right there. It's like... Uh, how well for them. How, yes. how perfect is it, that? It is for the kids. This is this is their area. They know they can they can make as big a mess as they want. These boxes' sole purpose was to make this look finished and complete. It, as an afterthought, we went, wow, look at all the storage we have. It, it just does a win-win for us. If you watch us enough on YouTube, we're always saying storage, storage, yes. more storage. Yes. Uh, and yeah, like you said, uh, class A type storage on a fifth wheel. Correct. Which is almost is unheard of. And where did you get that storage? So these boxes were built by a, an American made company right here in the USA. We got Barbie and Ken out here. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, this is their camping toy. <laughs> yeah. These ones, yeah. These, these ones stay outside. Well, and you guys probably didn't have to limit them on any toys. No, we said, didn't. <laughs> that you could bring everything you want. And, and, and again, I, I have to imagine that a lot of full time families. Or like you can only bring ten toys, or right. <laughs> whatever. We just don't have the room for all those toys. <laughs> we, we, yes, yes. We have the storage. RC is the company that um, that built the boxes to our specs for us. I gave them the dimensions. They are all the same. They are all keyed alike, and they all tie together um, vertically and horizontally. So they are the load capacity on them is very high. You can put hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Of, of stuff in these boxes. I carry spare leaf spring. I'm a tool guy. We carry a lot of tools um, for do-it-yourself fixes and whatever you need to do. I, I don't know if there's enough time in the day to show you all the tools, but we'll, we'll, we'll try. We'll okay. <laughs> so we get used to this lifestyle. You forget what you have, right? So this is a huge plus of a heavy-duty truck. This is pass-through. This goes completely oh, nice. through to the other side. So when you start peeling the layers out here. Now you're going to have all the guys watching, hating here, that has been told you can't take all the tools with you when you go RVing. And you said, I'm taking them all. That's right. <laughs> and we, I got room for more. <laughs> we put all the weight of the tools on the pack mule. The semi is holding a lot, a lot, a lot of weight in tools, but because it, it can't. We don't need to put all that weight on the trailer axles or on the coach itself. We can put it all on the semi because that's what this thing is designed to do. It is the pack mule for us. So, yeah, I don't hold back. I've got cutoff wheels. I've got you know, half inch impacts. Uh, oh my God. There's a skill saw in there, Sawzall. Uh, the, the only thing I haven't brought yet is my welder. <laughs> As you see in there, Tom, there's a grease gun, there's some hole saws, some tire patch kits. Uh, it's all in there. And then we go to the other side. You're ready for Josh's tool time. Yeah. You wouldn't believe how many people will come over and say, you know, I hate to ask, but do you have this? <laughs> and it's, it's always yes, right? I, I do oh. have that. <laughs> and then you have a new friend. <laughs> no, that's awesome. That like this, what does it for me? This guy is a surgeon. He's far more intelligent than I am. But at the end of the day, he needed to change out a, a couple of nuts on his trailer and he had never ran a tool or an impact or a wrench his whole life. And 
he was wildly fascinated by an impact. He was so impressed with it, he took down the name. He went to the local Home Depot, bought the Milwaukee tools, and brought it back to show me what he had bought. He was so happy with it. Oh yeah, I got a, cool. I got a cool story about Milwaukee tools. Actually, my uh, my son-in-law actually works at Milwaukee Tools. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, they just moved to Milwaukee here in the last roughly year. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah. He's we, an engineer. Well, there you go. We, we've got a whole semi full of Milwaukee stuff. We use That's them in so our shop, cool. and all the hand-me-downs from the shop get put in the semi. So uh, it's a win-win. And you do that without having to tow another trailer full of tools. <laughs> right. Oh, so that's that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's convenient for sure. So the other side is going to be all my electrical type tools. Okay. <laughs> it just keeps getting better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on this side we have all the electrical type stuff. I carry spare wire. Um, I carry multimeters, uh, extra headlights, a ballast for the headlights, the HIDs, uh, coolants, and you name it. In the back is the air hoses, um, but it's it's all in here. There is just it just never ends how much stuff we haul. <laughs> wow. There's all your. Now you've got your multimeter and <laughs> soldering, wire ends. We could almost do a solar install on the road if we had to. <laughs> uh, and then you got, you know, your safety stuff is in here too. Um, one thing that I do want to stress is we, we actually carry six full-size fire extinguishers on this setup. They're spread throughout and they're not packed in the back where you're never going to get to them. They're under our seats. They're next to our bed. Uh, that's important for anybody that's traveling full time. One little fire extinguisher doesn't do a whole lot. Right. So, Especially if you can't get to it. And and if you pack it away, you've, you've defeated the purpose. So one thing too, since we're standing here, that is, has been a huge benefit for us is there's a wireless camera set up inside the semi that controls these cameras. There's one on either side and there's one on the hitch. These on either side are okay. Uh, I still have better visibility out of my mirrors. The one for the backup hitch, I wouldn't trade for anything because I can hook this whole entire setup myself uh, with that one camera. I saw that back there. It's it's uh, That's great. It's a game changer for anybody that, that can't physically see through the bed or, or uh, you know, doesn't have one of the fancy new trucks that do that. Yeah, that's super cool. How many cameras do you have on uh, the trailer? So the, the, the coach has two, and I actually have a third one I'm going to add to the very back so I can okay. see the, the, the pickup. Uh, I haven't gotten around to it in all my free time. <laughs> <laughs> So when you talk about a low boy setup, what you're talking about is the offset here. The deck is set low between the tires. So this is a much lower base to start with because it was absolutely important to us to stay within legal legality, <laughs> legal height. Right. The legal height on this in anywhere I believe is 13 foot six. We are 13 foot eight. Um, oh, okay. And that required starting with a low boy. That's why we we went with this setup. We also wanted to have the um, triple axles instead of the tandem dually. I I felt like the triple was going to give less sway in the wind, more more uh, straight tracking, and obviously if you have a blowout, it's not the end of the world when you have triples. And you're not going to have a lot of damage to a typical RV when you have a blowout. Uh, we just had our first blowout on the Momentum. It did a little bit of damage, not that much, but it it can wipe out an entire slide. Right. Uh, because, yeah, it's, it's powerful when the tire blows out. So when these tires, these are set at 125 PSI. These are 17.5 Alcoas. These... Fender wells are eighth inch steel. 
<laughs> they are designed for the pickup to be driven over them. Okay. A tire blowout here, yeah, they're not fun, but it's not going to destroy our rig. Um, and that's, you know, that's a big deal for us. We've, we really started with safety as the number one starting point for everything we did. You look back and you're following down the lines. This here is the old wheel well. This is, this is where the Grand Design wheel well actually was. Right. And that is uh, 18 gauge aluminum. This here, this insert was put on a brake and bent and then riveted in. Uh, to, to give it that clean look to hide the old wheel well that was there and because uh, there's no turning back now what we've done is <laughs> you're all in right, right. <laughs> no putting it back on the old frame huh no no so how do you level it great question actually great question so uh grand design i'm not trying to sell them on you know but here's the deal they did their homework on a lot of things, and um, I really appreciate that they went the extra mile to give you your Lippert control here, which I'm sure you guys have in a momentum. Right. This Lippert control still works with the way I configured this setup. We have a factory location lowered front ram. So this front ram was brought down. You can see where I moved, I moved the holes and re-welded. Oh, in a lower position. So you didn't have. Oh, so you you did change that a little bit then. Absolutely. So okay. I I kept two bolts on each side on the moment on the grand design, and then two bolts on either side go through my new welded plate on the PJ. So I joined the two trailers there as well, all the way down the coach, and I actually use the factory six point leveling system that came on the grand design auto uh auto uh, level still works hitch height memory still works and we can still use the uh one touch control inside for everything as well that you're able to uh merge the the two together like that and keep that it's so. impressive to me that grand design threw the six point system on a 35 foot fifth wheel and here i am putting it on a 53 foot monster with a pickup on the back and it still will pick up all six tires off the ground and lift the pickup and the entire coach <laughs> really completely off the ground if you want <laughs> we always try to obviously keep the tires on the ground but we have had to change things out where you do lift the entire coach actually did it come off the ground on the other side it over did. here okay it is. yeah and i had to change out a main leaf we hit something bad and it broke a leaf and uh, i was able to replace it right on the side of the road don't tell anybody, but we actually have extra storage we don't need. <laughs> <laughs> so we have more than we need. Um, these, uh, this bay sits empty all the time because we haven't found stuff to cram in there yet. Uh, when we meet up on the road with our rig, we'll just give you guys some of our stuff. Yeah, all your alcohol and, and all your money can go right in there. I'll keep it safe for you. Okay. <laughs> this this Lippert Jack, you can see I did the same. I brought it way down and it's still attached to the Grand Design and the PJ with all new hydraulic lines that I custom made all the way around the entire coach. Wow. And this finally is the last of the factory Grand Design jack behind the axle, just like I believe the momentums are in the back. Right. You'd have to modify that just a little bit there. I did cut, so actually they're all cut. This is clipped so it doesn't hit the tire. And the other two are clipped, so they go up underneath the box. So are you taking orders? You know, um, <laughs> I, I think my wife would kill me. We <laughs> built this to get away from all the work and all the hustle. <laughs> not, not bring on more customers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so <laughs> would you put a price tag on it? We can talk about that later tonight after I get two or three beers in you. <laughs> okay. <Sure. laughs> I told them I wanted a mid-sized car. That qualifies, in their opinion, as a mid-sized car. I looked on the back, there was no wind-up thing, like a toy that it used to wind up, you know, as a kid and play with. Right. That's what that thing needs. What they're saying is that the economy and the compact uh -huh. levels are smaller than that. Well, 
We should get a picture of it on the back of the trailer and show it to <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's smaller than the Prius. That is very small. That is very small. <laughs> a rental vehicle is the second best off-road vehicle ever built. <laughs> Well, I guess I don't need the Jeep while no, I'm out here. No, so. I, I guarantee you we can do more with that on a weekend. As long as you didn't leave your credit card yeah. on deposit. <laughs> Shoot. Shoot. <laughs> so what was the motivation to start going full time? Health, health things took a turn for the worst uh, for myself. Um, and I found myself questioning all of the years I spent just grinding and okay. not being a part of my uh, family's life, you know? You kind of wake up one day and go, wow, my oldest son's 20, and I missed most of it, you know? I, so I've embraced this, my wife Megan and I, we've embraced this with our young children because we want to be a part of everything they do, so. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's that serious for us. And how long have you been doing this now? So we, we built this setup here in 18. And okay. we have been full time on the road since August. August. And we lived in it on our property off and on, cheating a little bit for about 13 months. Oh, <laughs> just, okay. Just to make sure we were all gonna do good in less than 400 square feet. Sure. No, that's that's the way to do it. That's yeah. that's great. And you learn a lot. That's for sure. In a small space. So have you shown up anywhere and, and be like, oh, this is not going to work. I cannot get in here. <laughs> um, we've had some communication breakdowns with uh, technology okay. <laughs> that, have, that have led us in the wrong way to an RV park. And we're on a oh. one-way alley and we're now backing out and stopping traffic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's, you yeah. Got to you know, traffic. <laughs> yeah, but you could do that in any size RV, you know. Yes, um, <laughs> yes, I, ha I have also done that. It's not fun. No, no, uh, man. It <laughs> when the directions mess up, it's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've now since changed to the Garmin 1090, which has been fantastic for putting in our size, our length, our width, our heights. Okay. You know, that, that has been uh, a huge tool for us. And, and the radio, two-way radios for us uh, has been a game changer. She's gotten really good at helping me get into places that I can't see in the mirrors. Right, and you know, a lot of places don't have cell coverage. If right. you think you're just going to call each other, right? Uh, so, yep. yeah, good uh, walkie-talkies is important. Yes. So you said you had a business, is that right? Yeah, we have a we have a fabrication business that's still going strong up in Northern California. Okay. Um, so the guys, we check in on them every. It depends. Six weeks, eight weeks. We we still touch base though. We come, we go, what we call home, um, and just kind of. Make sure everything's running smooth. Recharge the jets, and um, and then head back out. Okay. It, it's an evolution of projects with this thing too. So we'll go home and we'll do all the solar and jam it all out, and oh, then leave. Gotcha. It. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. so are you literally not in communication with your business for six weeks at a time, or no? Nope. Constantly. Okay. Constantly. Constant. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we uh, definitely have our fingers on the pulse still. Uh, have you ever heard of Tim Ferriss, the four-hour work week? <laughs> okay. Well, I, that somebody being able to walk away from their business and their business kind of running itself with very little, you know, communication or contact. That, that's kind of, that would apply to that book. Uh, and some people th say you can't really do it, uh, the four-hour work week, basically running your business for four hours a week okay. or less. Okay. And uh, so anyway, the book is kind of inspiring. Even if you can't get to four hours, maybe you can free up some time by being yes. more efficient, I guess, and communication style. And Well, anyway. here's the, the thing for us was is that if we were running the business full-time there, we would always say, let's go on vacation. Let's go take three or four days and let's go. That was more work trying to leave and come back than this <laughs> lifestyle is. I, right. I tell people all the time, it's easier to stay gone. It, <laughs> it just is because it was a nightmare to try to pre-plan and then you get home to nightmares. If you find the right crew that can run things for you, it's easier to stay gone. Well, and that's, that's great. 
that you can, so how, how much time do you, do you spend on your business during the week, do you think? Um, it, it varies wildly. If I'm setting up new clients, uh, that is very intensive on the phone. Um, but if the guys have their projects and they know what they're doing, uh, it may be an hour or two a day at the very most. Um, nice. So it's, it, it can, the weekends are off, so I can breathe a sigh of relief on the weekends. And um, yeah, not, not as much as you would think. Well, that's, that's great. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that have a business and they're trying to figure out the mm -hmm. exact same thing. You, and like you said, a key is, is really good people. <laughs> it's good people, and, and you have to be realistic about things. We knew we were going to take a pay cut. We knew we weren't going to be cranking out the amount of volume that we were before. Okay. We knew that this lifestyle was going to change the way we live. Um, so be realistic with your goals. You know, you're not going to make six figures. If you were making six figures before, you might not make that on the road. But look at what you bought memories and, and freedom right so I take it that you're the salesperson you you sign up all the new yeah. contracts yeah I get to okay. do yeah mm -hmm. okay right so just the the sheer volume of work is less because you're just not absolutely doing as much of it so. and if and I return for the projects that maybe I need to be there for um, okay. to get them going or or be the face when I need to be okay um, but the guys that have worked with us have been longtime friends. It, 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 we're like a family, you know. So it's we trust them with it, you know, with everything. That's that's great. So, I mean, so here we have yet more storage. This entire front box here is two feet deep, seven or eight feet wide, seven feet wide, and uh, it is, as you can see, packed. We have our cleaning supplies, we have extra carpets, and uh, I mean, it's all here. Leaf blower. And that's not in the way of your front storage bay, huh? So the front storage bay had to be modified a little bit. Okay. Um, it now has uh, four of these turnstile uh, tabs, and then it just pulls out, straight out, oh, okay. and slides off. So, oh, wow. Um, Traditionally, it would have swung up, but it, it actually just slides out of the way. Inside here, we have um, four, like I said, of the AMG Trojan batteries. Okay, gotcha. And they are on that Victron uh, uh, DC to DC converter. We okay. We also have the um, Onan Cummins 5500 that runs on propane. We have two 40 pound bottles that run that, and then we have two 30 pound spares. So when you see this again on the road, when we catch you again, this will be jammed full of um, Battleborn. We're doing six of their Game Changer 3.0s, uh, two 30 amp Victron um, inverters. We're doing the M MPPTs and uh, 3000 watts of residential solar on the roof. Sweet. Well, that'll be awesome. I'll have to come back out again. Yes, we'll do a 2.0 <laughs> with you. Okay. Uh, there is a whole lot more coming. This was just to get us off the ground, Tom. We're going to do an interior remodel and uh, renovate the inside um, because uh, we've, we've now, we wanted to live in it long enough to realize what we didn't like, right? So, Josh, what you're saying is that this is a starter for you? <laughs> the this star the, starter level RV? This was, so, we are wheelers. We go to the Rubicon and Ford Ice in our, in our Land Cruiser. We are used to tent camping only. We've tent camped. I've been tent camping since I was a little kid. My wife and I tent camped for about eight years together. We went straight from the tent to this. There was no RV in between. Um, my first time ever towing this setup was the day we bought it. Took it to the shop and began stripping it down for this build right here. So tent to tent to this and regular pickups to a semi. Yeah, so moving on, uh, our, our 5500 Onan runs on two 40 pound propane tanks, which we find pretty convenient that we can just throw the propane tanks in the pickup, go to town, get propane, generator can run. 
um, you know, for all your needs. And, and they go, it, it'll run quite a long time on the 40 pounds, which is nice. As far as the basement goes, obviously it's a solid tube, so it's full pass through. Z channel frame, so you get your uh, depth, being that it's Z channeled like that. Um, inside the basement is pretty straightforward. Camping chairs and smoker are in here. On this side is a, a Monroe slide out, so you can come all the way out with the freezer. And this is a Dometic 95DZ, the dual zone. DZ stands for dual zone. So this side can be kept at a different temperature than this side. We use them both for a sub-zero freezer. We run this at about negative eight. This setup here will run on 12 volt, 120. Um, we run it on 12 volt straight to the batteries. So you figure out a way to have the deep freeze along as well. Yeah, because we need to freeze <laughs> our coffee. So we have lots of coffee when we're on the road. <laughs> when, you, when you're feeding kids, uh, you got to have you got to have lots of storage. You know, a, you just can't have enough when you're boondocking. Um, we don't do a lot of hookups. We don't really do a lot of RV parks. We are out in the in the wilderness, out in the wild. So this is important to us. Well, I would imagine that there's not many RV parks that would say, yeah, come on in. You know, <laughs> so I learned a hard lesson. They all say, yeah, come on in. And then you get in there and you go, I have no business being here. They wanted my money more than they cared that I'm going to shoehorn in there and never get back out. We, we uh, went to San Diego KOA Resort um, for Christmas. We went to Legoland with the kids. And we had no business being in that park. They said uh, 100 foot, no problem. And I took uh, several nice scratches trying to make it around the bushes and things. The, the corners were too tight for a semi. Um, they will tell you you can make it. You, it's your responsibility to do your due diligence and make sure you actually really can fit. And um, there's lessons to be learned along the way. I, I, I research, research, research. Um, Google satellite, Google Earth, pulling the measurements. Um, the Garmin will tell us what we can and can't do. At the end of the day, we could make it a lot of places you wouldn't think we really could. We can get in there. The, sh the semi turns so sharp. And um, the swing on the rear axles, there is almost no rear swing. So as sharp as you can turn is why I have those axles set so far back is because of that. I have no rear swing. With that being said, this thing cheats the corners a lot more than a typical fifth wheel where you guys have your axles more in the center of the rig. It's more of a pivot in the middle or a pivot back at the end. So... You learn your rig and what you can and can't do. Yeah, that is a huge thing. Yeah, tail swing, and you've eliminated that. That's, yes. That's awesome. Because... Uh, my fear was tail swing. <laughs> I can't see it, so I'm afraid of it, yeah. right? What I learned now is the cheating of the corners, and all you fifth wheel and, and um, gooseneck guys out there know what I'm talking about. When, when, uh, when it wants to cut that corner, you take things very wide. That's where the extreme sharp turning of a heavy duty truck comes into play. And it's a huge benefit. Behind the back panel there is your typical solitude water pump um, and the back side of your whole water system. We replaced the factory pump with a Seaflow pump and two gallon pressure tank. The pressure tank is a bladder. You set the air pressure to what you want the PSI to be within the coach. This setup we have runs 60 PSI consistently there's no pressure loss and fluctuation like you would see with a normal pump system in an rv the the bladder is continuous throughout an entire shower or or whatever else you're using water for so what i like is is if you get in the shower with the bladder tank and you turn the pump off you have two gallons of water to shower with at 60 psi that's more than enough so i know i'm taking a two gallon shower every time i take a shower okay um we are still very um, water conscious when we're um, on the road. You never know when you're when or where you're going to get water next when you're boondocking. Exactly. Believe it or not, it isn't the easiest thing to go get water or to find a dump station. And, and even if we can find water, sometimes we're too big to get to the water. 
So, you know, it, it is something that you're always minding your manners on the road. You probably get your water at truck stops then, I would imagine. Is you that know, the easiest for you? No, um, it, it varies everywhere we go. Okay. In, in Havasu City, we could go right to the state park. Their state park is massive. Easily turn a semi around in it. Um, water here is not going to happen. <laughs> um, you go into town and there is Maverick gas station. Had full dump, full water, potable water, um, and then propane. All in one stop. Very convenient. Nice. So, um, that's what we do, and we, you do have to seek it out. Uh, it's kind of like your job when you're on the road, right? To see where you can and can't fit, or where you want to stay because it's beautiful like this. Um, there is work involved in all that, and water for us is is one of those things we have to find. I just have to turn the camera here as we get ready for sunset, just like again to get the full experience. Except for that, <laughs> right there. Right? That huge structure right away. <laughs> but yeah, just it's just so gorgeous here. You got the sound of the Colorado River down there. The way the mountains here are always changing. Here in a minute, the light will be gone off of this ridge, but it'll just be on those on peaks. those peaks. And those peaks are just pow. Yeah. It's just, I mean. And sun up out of our bedroom window is this back ridge. Is it changes from picture to picture with how red it was or becomes? Um, yeah, yeah. It, 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 this this was. We did not want to leave here. I think we spent a week here. And I remember you saying, "Cancel all my plans <laughs> for the next 14 days." Uh, yeah, just reminiscing about how much we enjoyed this spot and this campground. I mean. Uh, when Sheree and I were here last year, we were here about a week and did not want to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at it now going, huh, oh, I don't want to leave. But on to the next adventure. There you go. Well, come on in, sir. Yeah, it's getting cold out here. <laughs> yeah, nice and toasty in here. All right. We well, can't wait to see the inside of your home here. The inside we kept oh, nice. fairly factory because we didn't know what we liked or didn't like. So we wanted to just go with um, what Grand Design had planned. Okay. Uh, residential package. So behind you is the um, residential refrigerator. Um, we re changed out a few of the things. Some of the things we changed out are the microwave. Uh, we changed out the faucets throughout. Okay. Um, we very nice. You can't forget your freezer lock that you added. Yeah. <laughs> My grand design does it that way now. The view. The view from in here. The view is amazing. So some of the things we changed, we and almost immediately heated the table setup. Um, you can't fit four people at that table if you try. Sure. You might as well just get it over with. Grand Design should just get with the program. Turn it. <laughs> a couple bar stools. <clears throat> that crazy contraption you see underneath is an iRobot. It is a litter robot for our two kitties. Oh, oh wow. They travel full time. That litter box cleans itself. What's um, it called? It is an iLitter. iLitter box. Oh, okay. Um, It's... Uh, it, it cleans itself and it's filtered and we use the, um, what are those crystals? We use uh, fresh scent? Fresh step. Fresh step crystals. Um, and, and we don't have cat odor. A little bulky. Definitely not RV friendly. <laughs> Our kitties are, um, kitties are 49% bobcat, 51% savannah. You're looking at OC right there. She has more of the Savannah bloodline. That's why her eyes are cross-eyed like a Siamese cat. <laughs> she was also the runt. So um, she was given to us with the older sister. The older sister. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's that? So they have an extra toe. They're polydactyl. Uh, bobcats have oh, a, yeah. a, a bigger toe. And um, no tail, that. obviously. Callie is the older, and you can really see her extra toe. 
if you look there, Tom, it's it's very pronounced. It's okay. Mm. Oh, see, you're still <laughs> So Callie is, they are both kittens. Um, she is one years old. She will be about 18 pounds when she grows up. Yeah, those are awesome looking. Just, that's such a unique cat. I've never seen anything like that before. Yeah, most people so. have it. Yeah, most people have it. Um, we have not changed a whole lot in here. Um, this we, we are on our 2.0 build will be um, couches that we have ordered that are going to fit this size. Um, we're going to go away from the leather. The cats are really hard on it. We're going back to like a, I think it's a microfiber or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, something a little more cushiony. But we just tried to make it feel like home in here. We didn't go crazy yet with anything. Um, we, we added some plants, mm -hmm. our essentials, our knives, and kitchenware. Yeah. We have, you know, it's nice to have things like your wedding album. And uh, my mom, before she passed, she was very much into crystals and things like that. So I have some of her crystals and some we've collected along the way. Um, pictures and things that remind us of where we came from or where we're going. Funny stuff you collect on the road, you know. Sure, and I mean, you guys have made it look very homey in here. So, I mean, this is this is great, you know. And probably minimal things you have to put away. You've got a lot of stuff that's stuck. Yes. Um, <laughs> we, we put things like this we do not stick down because they need special care when we move. Things like this that are not invaluable, they are stuck. They ride. Uh, we can pack down, load up the semi, hook up, truck, everything, hit the road in one hour. And that's not hustling. That's just doing the same thing the same way every time so nothing gets forgot. Pretty simple, though. Plants come down quickly. The kitchen's fairly straightforward. One of the things that um, everybody... It's an ongoing joke now with Grand Design people that I talk to on the road. We talk to. <laughs> this is our bread storage. Um, the oven is absolutely worthless. Uh, bread... Sure. <laughs> when we do our 2.0, this will be the new insignia. Um, it's just not going to happen right now. But we will. Uh, an oven is is uh, very important to us. So this will get cut out. This countertop will get replaced. The insignia will go in. For now, we use a foodie, which we really like. Um, and we also use the smoker. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but LG's a good name. We went right to Home Depot, and lo and behold, it, it bolts, fit. It bolts right in. Piece of cake. Wow. That's great. This is your second, second. microwave. The, the one that came from Grand Design um, died almost as fast as the oven didn't work. The oven, unfortunately, <laughs> didn't work right out of the gate. Um, <laughs> Samsung Residential, which we like. We have, um, we have, you know, freezer storage down here and uh, also in the basement. Um, and your and then your big fridge up top which is uh yeah i mean you name it it's in there yeah that's we're, we're a traveling family of four so this kind of stuff is important <laughs> right um energy drinks and coffee right <laughs> <laughs> to keep up with your kids <laughs> the solitudes are good about having a good sized pantry so we do have a decent selection of um you know, kid kid friendly stuff. Although I'm guilty of eating cereal myself, um, but it's all in there. Pretty much, you name it, and we try to haul it. Another extra storage is down below where the dishwasher should be. We do not do the dishwasher, so we have even more storage. Okay, so the dishwasher was an option in this model. We opted not to do the okay. dishwasher in here. Everybody has trouble with RVs, right? We all know that they're not perfect. <laughs> One thing we struggled with was air conditioners. We went through two Coleman. We went through a Coleman Mach 8 and then um, the other Coleman. I don't remember the name of it. Um, so we switched. It was not an easy conversion, but we switched to the Dometic Penguin 2s with heat pumps in both. So we actually have the um, Dometic down here as well as the Dometic up in the bedroom and so far so good the heat pumps are awesome we use them a lot both at the same time to heat the entire coach 
in the colder weather, everybody knows you don't get that, so we still use the furnace uh, for, for heating as well, which is propane, just like the generator. So how cold will you camp in? What, like, is so tonight, cold, tonight is going to be 21. Um, okay. That's about as cold as we go. I do have heat pads that are in the wet bay down there, my wet bay that I added to the coach. Um, the cold doesn't really bother this thing. The, we, we did opt for the dual pane windows in this model. Um, we pretty much clicked every option, I think, um, when it came to what Grand Design was offering in this year on Solitude. So the dual pane windows, I think, help. I don't know. I can't prove that, but it sure as heck doesn't hurt. Coming on up here, um, fairly straightforward. Um, we changed out the faucet. The showers in the Grand Designs are fairly good size. You have the pop-up for your head height. Um, I am a Dometic fan, so I had to switch again. The toilet is a Dometic. Oh, okay. <laughs> it flushes just like a house toilet for the most part. Okay. And if you have little boys, it, cleaning. <laughs> one of the best parts about the Dometic is it doesn't have all this stuff to clean every crevice oh, like, right. like the other toilets do. Yeah. And it's a swirl. So we really like the fact that it's a swirl flush. <laughs> okay. Which is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's the little things in the RVs that are right. cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> this was our uh, Antelope Canyon. We just picked that up the other day. Oh, man. Antelope Canyon yeah. is a bucket list item for sure. And that's you guys right that's there. Us. Wow, that's awesome. Oh, and I love that. Find joy in the journey. That's the first thing I we did to this was stick that to the wall. And on to the bedroom. Um, we're one of the few people that went the other way. We started with the king. We thought we had to have it. We quickly learned that a king in this space is almost impossible to make the bed. So we went to a residential um, Simmons Beauty Rest Black. Uh, super comfortable mattress um, still not so heavy that the hydraulics don't work for the lift um, so that really made uh, this area easy to make your bed and things uh, full-size closet the front cap the entire front cap is the closet and then we did go ahead and I installed Megan and I installed the washer and dryer from Splendid which are absolutely must have if you have children on the road <laughs> we have learned that you can do laundry boondocking if you hold a lot of water um this setup uses seven gallons for a 30 minute cycle okay so um it can be done and you can run multiple loads um we do it all the time well i totally agree with you on going with the queen instead of the king because you, yeah, you have to cram a king in, yes. even if they say, oh, you can have a king, and yes. people are like, oh, yay, but then you've got, like, no space. <laughs> you have no space on the sides. It, it's a selling point, and for yeah. some people, they need the king. That's fine. For us, we, we don't. Um, this works for us better, so that's why we went this route. Um, dresser here. TVs are part of the 2.0 upgrade. We will be changing everything out to Samsung smart TVs with apps so we can actually enjoy our YouTube channels on the TV. So <laughs> that, that'll be a 2.0 upgrade that's coming up here this, this summer. Yeah, we had to change out our TCL yeah. <laughs> as well. We, they fought the good both fight. Of them. They, they work, but um, the, you know, smart TVs will work a whole lot better. Yeah, definitely. You know? And then again, a Dometic with the heat strip up top. Um, it was a fairly involved install. I'm not gonna lie. There was uh, there was some wiring there that there was kind of a kind of a pain, but we got it and it it all works. One thing that was really nice about the Dometic Penguins too is they are lower profile, which actually gave us another inch of overall clearance on the coach. Because uh, are are they I, quiet? You know they are. I didn't notice they were a little quieter than the Coleman's. Okay. Not not like game changer quiet. I think we are gonna go ahead and do the um, inserts that they make to quiet things down because this is the racetrack system in here. Uh, we have not made that purchase yet. Um, partly because we do like to control them here. 
So you have your direct bedroom accelerated heating and cooling option. It's going to be hard to want to get away from that just for less sound, but we might. Your bedroom is is really beautiful too. The way you've got it uh, decorated here. We so try to this keep it great. fairly simple. Um, our, our kiddos, Haley and Jace, we kind of do have a slight bear theme in the coach. We'll probably be going away from that as we acquire more things on the road. It's my mom's crystal. Um, that was something that she carried with her everywhere she went when she traveled. My parents full timed, and so did my grandparents. Oh, cool. So um, we're. We're third generation full time campers here. <laughs> That's so, awesome. We didn't just jump into this blindly. We had a lot of hand me down experiences and um, things from from the grandparents and and my parents. And then Megan can she's she's dying to get on some dinner going here. Okay. <laughs> Haley and Jace. This is Tom. Hi, Hi guys. This is our daughter Haley and our son Jace. And Haley is six and Jace is show. Five. Yeah. All and right. OC stands for orange cat. We kept it. <laughs> <laughs> well, OC looks very pretty. Yes. So she's rude though. Yeah, she's rude. <laughs> she's sugar claws in my. Do you want to show them what you practiced? Oh. Tell them about the YouTube. You know all about it, huh? Yes. Well, look at the camera. Get your hands out. And tell them what you practiced. Jace, you too. Uh -uh. What'd you say? I said. Look at that. That. And that on my YouTube, they say to subscribe, which is the red button. And <laughs> and click the, the bell. bell. <laughs> Are you getting nervous right now? No. You look like you're clamming up. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your journey. Yeah. <laughs> So do you have a name for people the HDT? Not, uh, yeah. You don't name it? We haven't done that either, but yeah. people are all about naming their RVs and rigs and stuff like if that. If I could so. think of something evil and Mad Max like I would, yeah. <laughs> all right, so we'll get viewer help on viewer this help. one. There you go. There so you go. help Josh and Megan name their massive rig here. Yeah. <laughs> so comment down below. <laughs> and will you guys pick the best one? 
We, we, we could run with the best one. Okay. The, the most likes. Our, our, the most likes one. comments gets the most likes. Nice. I like <laughs> that. that. That's perfect. So uh, vote below with your like which name for this massive RV uh, and HDT gets, yeah. you know, most favorited. Let's do that. There you awesome. Go. Love it. Well, come on in. I'll show you. It's, it's not not as luxurious as uh as your truck i'm sure <laughs> well it can but, do uh, so much more you know you've got a nice wide open dash a lot of storage up top oh yeah this is the low roof line which we chose okay um, we have our traveling kitties ah uh, the kitties Some are there snacks we're in travel mode today right um, we have a fairly good size refrigerator here Oh, that, nice. Um, runs on the inverter, 2,500 watt inverter. Okay. We have a 32-inch flat screen for the kids. They like to watch their DVDs when we're I going see down that. to keep them happy. It's all about keeping everybody comfortable and happy. <laughs> yeah, Car seats for are sure. Right into the main main wall. This area here actually folds up into a table. Okay. So as they get older, we can do table and cards if if need be. Um, but for the most part, we just leave it down. And you said that they'll also do some of their school lessons in here so, on the road. Absolutely. Megan will sit in the middle. Once we get on the road, the kitties come out, the snacks go down. Megan will sit in the middle, my wife and the, and the kids will do schoolwork as we go down the road. Uh, it, it works great. It's a good way to kill time for them. And, uh, and everybody's happy. That's super cool, guys. You're gonna love this part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, the guys like the fact that it, it rolls a little call, and it's a it's a good non, you know, good old good old American muscle. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Um, uh, That's our group bobblehead. Yeah, I recognize the group there. Yep, big uh, group. <laughs> <laughs> Ready for climbing, huh? Climbing. <laughs> All right. Wow. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, a few inches. <laughs> All right, cool. How do you tie it down? So my tie downs are, I welded D-rings in here. So if you look right down in that corner, there's D-rings welded into the corners. Okay. And then I use the max straps to go over the A-arm like that. And then this attaches. like that and then I set the parking brake as soon as I get out oh, okay to be sure sure and then I always suck the front down first to get it as close to the coach as I feel I need to get it and you can see I've gotten too close a few times so I will be uh, oh sure <laughs> I will be bedlining probably a bedliner or some sort of way to protect the two from rubbing against one another because things do move down the road a little. I suppose there's not too many places you would uh, use that, but the truck is a big use, uh, <laughs> you know, or a Bronco. <laughs> the truck is nice. Uh, we've, we've enjoyed having the pickup a lot more than the rock crawler. Uh, the crawler doesn't have doors or air conditioning <laughs> or any of the amenities. It, it, it's only good for exploring on rocks, right? <laughs> it is. It's good for the way remote stuff, but this has been great. Lots of backup, huh? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I kind of have a similar story about leaving our uh, truck attached to the RV, not disconnecting for the quick overnight. Okay. And uh, I guess too much movement, you know, in the RV shakes the truck, uh -huh. and then uh, the alarm goes off. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. so, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a little freaky. Yeah. So. <laughs> I know. You're like, what's happening? Oh, it's me. So how do you guys like the RV? Do you like it, Haley? Yeah. yeah. Do you like it, James? <laughs> Is it fun? <laughs> you get to see all kinds of cool stuff. Oh. I bet. And school on the road, huh? Yay. That's your favorite part, huh? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> More fun than a classroom, though, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's fun. It's funner not to go to school. <laughs> oh, okay, gotcha. Well, I might have to agree with that, but yeah. I think this is the best school right here. Yeah. I mean, uh, thanks again, guys, you know, you for 
allowing me to tour your home and, and the amazing upgrades you've done. I mean, it blows my mind. It's like, I don't know if I can, like, can anybody top this? It's like, <laughs> who's going to try? <laughs> Everybody's going to do whatever works best for them. So. Right. And you have such a great solution and you have more plans, more yes. upgrades coming. So hopefully we'll get to see you guys on the road again. But uh, safe travels. Thanks you for guys. coming out. And yeah, best wishes on, on all the plans coming up here. And yeah. if you guys are new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button for more videos like this and ring that little bell. And for now, we're going to say goodbye from Lee's Ferry. And remember to enjoy Joy your, your journey. journey. So long. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Thank you. you. Enjoy the rest of your journey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, of course, before we leave Lee's Fair, we, we got to get this shot right here. It's, it's beautiful. And these rocks must weigh tons. Yes. You could probably haul a few of those around, right? Put them on the back. You, lo <laughs> lose the truck. Ditch the truck. <laughs> Rock collection. Uh, you probably wouldn't get very far as the, as the rangers chase you down. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, the quick geology lesson on these rocks is they did fall from above and when they landed on the ground they protected like the area from all the elements so it eroded around and created that base for the rock so they're like perched up and eventually they will fall <laughs> we just don't want to be around when they happen yeah maybe not be there it probably roll down and boy that would make a great video though. if you put a solar <laughs> gopro on there now in a hundred years maybe you'll get you yeah maybe some kind of uh really big battery yeah <laughs> yeah we won't be around for that no but uh thanks again guys so you bet. Uh, thank you <laughs> yeah this is a beautiful area we'll have to come back yes when it's warmer yeah <laughs> lose the jacket right <laughs> this hotel is so close to the freeway that they put earplugs in there listen to this Stop.